Welcome to Cage Minds. I'm Micah Frankel. It has been a while. Today we're joined by Jocelyn Jones Liebarger, and I can just say fighter at this point. Uh, welcome back. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for having me. Yep. And you can say fighter at this point, right? <laughs> right. Coming back in some different terms. Mm -hmm. We're going to see you bare knuckle boxing in Jackson, Mississippi, just next weekend. So I guess let's, let's go back to the start. About 2017, you retire from MMA. At that point, was it a full-blown retirement done with combat sports? Yeah, it it was, you know, I was, um, you know, I'll just be 100% honest. I wasn't making like the best decisions and like, you know, that Nina fight here in Phoenix is a fight I wanted, a fight I asked for and obviously it didn't go my way and like just everything just changed for me after that. And I was just like, I didn't have like the passion or the desire to do what I was doing anymore. Um you know, leading up to that, like I had a great time in RFA, like a fantastic time, so much fun fighting for them. I really enjoyed it. And then like just everything turned when it went to the, when I went to the UFC. Um, but of, of course, memories that I'll have forever. Um, when I made that decision, it was probably fast, but you know, I'm the type when I make a decision, I'm all in either whatever the decision is, I go for it. And so, yeah, it was, uh, it was, um, yeah, I was done. <laughs> How long did it take before you were back in the gym, before you were back on your grinding, your schedule, just like normal? It was a little bit. It was a little bit, to be honest. Um, at that time, like Lauren Murphy was still training at the MMA lab, um, you know, and I remember going in there and helping her get ready for a fight. Um but I wasn't back in there every day. Now I'm, I'm always have been active, right? So I have to get some type of run or weightlifting in, you know, that's just how I work. That's how I operate. But I wasn't back at the lab every day. No, not at all. I just thought back, you know, to myself, okay, what am I going to do now? Like, you know, talking to my wife at the time, like, Oh, I, I need to go find a real job. What am I going to do? You know? So there was a lot of decisions to be made and, you know, try to navigate my way around that and see what it looks like. So it was different. What was that like? What was life away from competing? Um, it felt good. It, it did feel good to be at home more and spend more time with the family. And um, at that time, like I was a personal trainer, so I was training clients. I had a shit ton of clients and I had a blast at seeing, you know, them hit their fitness goals. So I really enjoyed that. Um, and then I landed a job for Wayfair, you know, Wayfair, the furniture company, Wayfair.com. And to be a hundred percent honest, I still work for them. Currently, I still work for Wayfair great company. I've been doing a lot of traveling, working for them. I uh, absolutely love it. So I kind of found like a home and a, working for a company who still supports me coming out of retirement and taking a bare knuckle boxing fight. So that's, uh, that's the cool part of it. And, um, but yeah, so I still, I work a full-time job. So you found the job that you have now, but when did this itch start to, uh, to creep up? When, okay. So when bare knuckles started having their shows, it's, I was just like, holy shit. Okay. That's like real fighting. So I always had like an eye on it. Well, when Paige moved over and a couple of handful of the other girls, uh, and then watching Joe Riggs move over, you know, cause he was at the, he was at the lab forever. Um, it was just like, oh, shoot. Okay, this is this is something I think I would want to do because I've always been known for my stand-up, right? I've always been known for my boxing. Um, so talking to, like, friends and family about it, they're like, what? No way. No way. You know, so it took a while for some convincing. Um, but I remember about a year and a half ago having a conversation with Coach John Crouch about it. And he's like, when you're ready, kid, he's like, you know, you're always one of, my, you know, always one of my girls and, you know, just get back in here. And uh, so I went, I 
after probably a couple months after that conversation, I, I went back to the lab and was training um, on the stand up days and, you know, was getting just sparring in and training with Randy, my stand, my still same stand up coach. Um, and now, yeah, I called Danny, you know, Ruben Singh, my old manager. I said, Hey, can you give me a fight in there? He's like, Yeah. And literally, like within days, they were just like, Let's do it. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how it happened. But it took a while to convince everybody. <laughs> so, how much training? was there in the stand-up in the striking realm before making that call to the manager, before actually getting the full ball rolling? About a year. About a year getting back in it, getting getting the rhythm back, getting hit again, just feeling that on your body, that wear and tear. Um, you know, because when you take so much time off, and then you go back to it, it's not, it takes a while, you know, for your body just to get back to it. You know, your, your feet hurt, your shoulders hurt, everything hurts, but uh, it's been really nice just training boxing, just training stand up. So this has been a real thought out chess move. You've put the pieces in order and you've really observed the scene to make this decision. Yes, yes. And, and that's, that's the way it has to be done is like, you know, not performing the way I wanted to in the UFC, like those losses still sit with you, like for me, and I can speak probably for a number of athletes that, you know, having the will to compete and just to win is that like, that's one of the things that that's one of the things that I really struggled with after and has pulled me back is just wanting to win. How much bare knuckle training have you done already? Uh, we've done quite a bit. Um, you know, with the fight being next week, we're not hitting a lot of mitts, you know, just bare knuckles. Just, you know, it, it's all trial and error learning, right? How to do it, right? What to get your hands ready and things of that nature. But we did quite a bit in the, uh, in the in, in fight camp, yeah. What did that feel like after three years, fight camp, having went through that process, those weeks, that that grueling of the timeline? I have probably had one of the best camps in a long time. And the reason I say that is because Courtney Casey's back at the lab, okay, training full time. Um, I have two teammates and, and you'll hear about them really soon, but um, both girls, uh, Leslie Hernandez, she has 50 boxing fights. One of my other teammates, Olivia, has 80 boxing fights, and they're both transitioning to MMA. Um, and they're both undefeated, undefeated as amateurs right now. They can't get fights. So my sparring partners have been Courtney Casey and both my, my teammates, Leslie and Olivia. So talk about rounds that are just rounds are insane sparring five rounds with a fresh body every round is I really feel like I've gotten my butt kicked I've gotten better and I've learned a lot like it's been a good really good eight weeks and you said it's been a year in the making what was it like though those first couple of weeks getting back in the gym and how that feel it was it was hard um, but it was so nice because the lab is is home for me and the team has got so much bigger um, just seeing all the new faces like it, it's people who have moved here to train, you know, with John Crouch and everybody at the lab. Um, it's been really good. And then also to do this fight camp next to Ben Henderson, obviously, you know, Ben, who's fighting the same night as me um, for Bellator here in Phoenix. Uh, it's been really nice to to do fight camp together. As we look towards fight night, going to be taking on Martina Carroll. I saw she has some Muay Thai experience. What do you expect of this challenge? Um, I think it's gonna it's gonna be a great fight. She's I think taller than me. Um, you know, you never know. Finding a girl who comes from Muay Thai, I don't think she has any MMA fights. So um, it's, I'm excited about it. It's going to be a, it's going to be a fun night. Do you think 
any difference her Muay Thai experience versus your MMA experience, either one giving either athlete more of an advantage in bare knuckle boxing? I think I might, to be honest, because she hasn't really been hit in a four ounce glove or, you know, it's all been, um, you know, boxing gloves in her Muay Thai fights, obviously. Um, so I think I do, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's a backyard fist fight. So. Now, how different of an environment has it been like for you in the training sense of not having to worry about the kicks, not having to worry about the takedowns? It's been really nice. Just focus on footwork, head movement. Um, and, you know, especially with bare knuckles, taking your hands right back to your face. Right. Uh, it's been it's been really nice. It's been much more enjoyable. <laughs> And I know just looking at bare knuckle boxing, it feels like it's been a different opportunity for the women and and almost promoted in a different way, giving them a, a bigger platform, I'd say, than how it started off in MMA. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, and I think that that leads up to what what the girls done in MMA, though, to get us to where we are today, right? You gotta you always have to thank Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate, like the big names. Because of them, that's why it's getting promoted so quickly for women in bare knuckles and we can hold our own. So, um, you know, you always got to look back on to where, where, how far we've come in women's combat sports and uh, always thank the OGs. Definitely important to do that. Also, though, we're looking forward because we're looking forward to your fight. Do you feel like the nerves are going to be any different now that it, it's the return just because it's been a while? Um, you know, I probably the nerves are going to be there for sure. One hundred percent. But that's one thing, you know, you got to embrace them and not push them away. You got to accept that feeling. Hell, I get nervous when on our Shark Tank days, Wednesday and Saturdays, we spar you know, 99%, right? Like coach says, we get so close to the fire without getting burned. And I get nervous on my rounds on those days because I want to perform well. I want to do everything my coaches are asking me to do. So um, I think, yeah, then there's going to be some extra nerves there for sure. Mm -hmm. Now that you have the job that you're satisfied with, now that you're back to competing and everything, does it feel like life is together in a way where it was missing a piece for a while? Um, yeah, yeah, it does. Um, like I said, this has been something I've been wanting to do for a long time and it took a lot of convincing to my family and friends. Um, so I'm just happy it's finally here. I look forward to it. Happy to see you back. Great to see that smile. And last off, gotta ask, do you have a Justin Herbert jersey? I don't have Justin Herbert. I have Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, um, Denzel Perryman, Philip Rivers, you know, I need to get, I need to get Herbert for sure. So even though you guys didn't make the playoffs, still happy with the trajectory the team is going? I am. I'm excited. We, we gotta, we gotta make some moves on the offensive line on that right side and uh, make our defense need to stop the run, but I'm excited for next year. <laughs> Knew I had it. Check in with the biggest charges. Yeah, I appreciate I knew. that. <laughs> and that's awesome. another thing is that I want to say this real quick: the the Bolt Nation, the Bolt family, they all it is huge, right? The Charger fan base is huge, and they all support me with this upcoming fight. Like I got more more fans and more friends of this. It's been awesome. So shout out to the Bolt Nation, Bolt family, you all rock. Jocelyn, thank you for the time. Hey, I appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon.